Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 486 machine that I built in a recent video. We got it working with the uh, GoTech drive to install a lot of the floppy uh, images for games and things that we wanted to try out. We configured the turbo and the play of the current megahertz. I didn't have a uh, VGA CRT at the time. Uh, but I do have one now that uh, matches the aesthetic of this machine. It's a little bit dim, but uh, I think it should serve the, uh, the purpose nicely. So one of the things I wanted to explore next with this machine was the idea of getting it connected up to the internet and uh, seeing what we can do there. So to do that, we're going to need a network card. So I have sourced a 3Com Etherlink 3 uh, based on the 3C509B chipset and got some uh, driver disks and uh, there's a DOS suite of tools uh, called MTCP which has a lot of the, the tooling you need to talk to the actual packet driver that is controlling the, the network card uh, but we'll run through all of that and uh, get that configured and uh, then see what we can do with some networking from DOS. So the card has been installed in the machine and the first step we need to do after that is to get the packet driver I've got a disk image that I put on the GoTech drive and I'll put a link in the description to the location where I downloaded that. The main things we're going to need off here is a packet driver and I've already copied this over to the C drive. This uh, 3C5X9PD.com is the packet driver for this particular line of cards and you load that first, uh, allowing DOS to talk to the card itself. And then the other thing you need is a network stack that runs on top of the packet driver to actually do uh, TCP IP. And I'm gonna be using uh, MTCP. So again, that's already copied over. But then the other thing we wanna look at on this drive is the installer has a diagnostic program. We'll go ahead and check that out. And we can go to run tests. Start the tests. Looks like this will loop through 10 times, but I'm just going to let it go through once just to confirm everything is working, at least as far as the card itself. And it did pass. So we're good there. That's looking good. We can also go into configure. The one thing I changed in here is I set the uh, driver optimization to be DOS client. You can set it for Windows or DOS. I'm not sure exactly the details of what it's doing, but obviously I'm going to be using it in DOS. And uh, so I believe that will give us the, uh, the best results there. And then you can view uh, just some other information about the card, statistics, that's kind of interesting, showing uh, packets transmitted, um, probably just for this particular boot session. But I think that is everything we need within there. So now we'll jump out to the C drive, where I've already copied over that packet driver. So we'll go ahead and run that. And we do need to pass it in the interrupt address. 5x9pd. And uh, obviously, you would probably drop this into your uh, auto exec or config sys uh, so it's just done on boot. There we go. Looks like we're configured. And uh, the other thing I had to do was on my uh, router on the network, I uh, reserved an IP address for this uh, MAC address. So it is getting a IP address assigned by the network. Um, and then there is the MTCP. Uh, so in here we've got everything and you can see we've got uh, FTP, uh, an HTTP server, IRC, ping. The thing you need to do to configure this is uh, there's an MTCP uh, config file. And uh, in here you can set a lot of things like that, uh, that interrupt that I mentioned. 
um, things like your uh, IRC username, FTP, client options, telnet, and uh, HTTP server. And then the most important, of course, is, is your uh, gateway uh, IP address and uh, name server uh, to allow all that to work. So once you've got that in place, the other thing you need to do is set the environment variable uh, for mtcp config equal to the location where you have that file. Again, this would be set in your auto exec bat, but I'm just doing it here to show how that is done. p slash mtcp.config. And now we should be good to uh, go ahead and do a test. Let's do a, a ping of google.com. And there we go. We're getting a result from Google. And you can see their uh, IP address there. So it looks like that's all, all good and working. I have done a few pre-test items. I uh, did set up a uh, HTTP server. So we can do that. And that's based on those values in that config file. Uh, so it is using a uh, directory that I specified, and then I just put a simple uh, index.html file in there. Just to show that working, I'm going to connect from a PC I have here. And we'll see the connection. And there we go. You see the connection being made. And on the PC, I can see the result. I'll do a screen capture and show that as well. Go ahead and exit out of the HTTP server. Uh, we can also do an FTP server. I'm not going to go into all the details there, but uh, I am looking forward to getting that going. It has been great to have the GoTech, but also uh, you're limited by that uh, floppy image size. So any files larger than uh, will fit on a floppy uh, can be problematic to transfer over. So uh, having that FTP server will make uh, that a lot more convenient. So one thing that is uh, all the rage these days is AI, obviously, and uh, ChatGPT. So I thought an uh, interesting thing to do with the uh, new network capabilities would be to connect up to ChatGPT, but uh, also to do a little uh, comparison with what we had back in the day on uh, DOS, and uh, one of those was uh, Dr. Spazzo, a very simplistic uh, chat application. So go ahead and launch that. Dr. Spazzo, my creative labs, please enter your name. So the one thing this has is obviously the... Uh, J -O -E -L. Hello, Joel. My name is Dr. Spazzo. I am here to help you say whatever is in your mind freely. Our conversation will be kept in strict confidence. Memory contents will be wiped off after you leave. So tell me about your problems. So I thought this would be interesting to look at. And uh, obviously the uh, difference here is is that it uh, is of course not AI, it's just uh, basically a, a chat script doing very simplistic things uh, with uh, te text recognition and uh, you know parsing basic sentences. But it is doing uh, the voice synthesis. Uh, I, I think it would be pretty cool actually if you could find a way to tie this into ChatGPT so that you could use the same uh, old voice synthesizer uh, with the ChatGPT results. There is a command line command that lets you parse text files and use the same voice synthesizer, which might be uh, something I might look into at some point. But again, this is very simplistic. Hi, Joel. Please ask me anything. So you can see, of course, it's not uh, actually understanding what you're saying, and it's just doing sort of a, a bouncing responses back to you. But it, you know, knows if you did a question based on the question mark, things like that. Uh, very simplistic text processing. 
So now let's uh, go ahead and jump over into uh, the current state of AI with ChatGPT. Someone has created a ChatGPT client for DOS. The one thing you do need to do is uh, actually launch a proxy server on a modern desktop. And I'll put links in the descriptions to everything you need to download once that uh, proxy is running. And uh, you also have to do some setup on uh, OpenAI, uh, make an account there and get a uh, developer key uh, that allows you to access it. Uh, but once we do that, we could do something. Uh, let's see what we could do that is DOS related. How about, um, how would I view the contents of memory? Uh, how about the first 256 bytes of memory in MS-DOS? And there we go. Uh, you can use the debug command in MS-DOS to view the contents of the first 256 bytes of memory. Here are the steps. Open a command prompt in MS-DOS, type debug and press enter. Type D space zero space 100 and enter. Uh, this looks correct to me. Let's go ahead and give it a try. So if we exit out, and there we go interesting that uh, that memory contents actually contain chat GPT and what other connections do you see so we're seeing some plain text strings and memory there uh, we'll go ahead and quit out so it could be useful um, I do see it being fairly limited because there is not a convenient way to copy and paste uh, results. Let's do something like um, write a MS-DOS batch file to copy all txt files from the current directory into a new directory called text. And see what we get. And there we go. Make directory text. Copy star.txt to text. So that looks looks uh, correct. But again, you're going to have to basically retype everything that it's doing. And if you get into longer, uh, more complex results, obviously it would not be uh, very usable. Oh, wait, no. Escape. Yeah, so that is uh, DOS chat GPT. That about wraps it up for this look at networking with the 486. We've got the 3Com network adapter installed and we're able to get it connected up to the network, set up the packet driver and uh, using MTCP tools to connect it up and access FTP, HTTP, and some other network resources like ChatGPT. There are some future things I'd like to explore with DOS and maybe Windows 3.1 networking. Uh, one thing I might actually take a look at is this uh, sealed copy of uh, Norton PC Anywhere for Windows 3.1 that I uh, recently came across. It allows uh, controlling uh, network PCs from each other, and I think that would be a cool one. I'm still not 100% sure if I want to open it up uh, as it is still sealed. I just found it at a, a Goodwill for a couple bucks, so I uh, thought that was a kind of a cool thing to find and kind of fits this era of PC really well. So I could set up two machines and uh, kind of explore this old version of uh, PC control across the network. So uh, let me know if you think that would be interesting or if there's uh, any other older DOS networking topics you would like to see covered in the future. And uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.